it is with gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that today we are witnessing an occasion to reflect on the 10 year anniversary of the creation of the National Hajj Commission, NACO. In this audience, I see many people who participated actively before the creation of NACO during its creation and continue to handle Hajj affairs to the betterment of the Muslim Ummah. The eminence, I thank God Almighty to have had the opportunity less than two weeks when I was appointed as the chairman of the Presidential Committee on Hajj in October of 2006 to have had the singular honor of being the first public officer to work with you when you were appointed as the Sultan of Sokoto at a time when even the staff of office was not issued to you. And over the years that I served, I have had the good fortune of working very closely with you and so many of the elders in this hall. And I think when we talk about Hajj in Nigeria, uh, for me, that period is a period that I'll continue to cherish. According to the program, I'm supposed to give a keynote address. Really, I don't have any address prepared, and I don't think I am competent enough to provide a keynote address. But having read briefly what our leader and brother Dr. Osman Bugaji is going to say to us, I would say that I'll just pick one or two points out of there which I totally agree with. I think the greatest thing that has happened to Hajj management in Nigeria is the enactment of the National Hajj Commission of Nigeria Act 2006. Because it's a document that clearly spells out what needed to be done. And it's a document that arose because of genuine desire and yearnings of the Muslim Ummah. And as we will see in the presentation by Dr. Osman, he indicated that it took them five good years to be able to make sure that this document uh, saw the light of day. And there are so many people in the National Assembly, within the ulama, within the traditional Muslim community, the Islamic organizations, the tour operators, and general people of public. The greatest thing that has happened is the act. Unfortunately, during my tenure, we were able to achieve only a very limited part of the act. And I had always told my colleagues in the board that we were there as the pioneer board, in my opinion, to stabilize Hajj affairs. Stabilize Hajj affairs and attend to crucial aspects that were fundamental to Hajj affairs. And thereafter, by the grace of God, those coming behind us would be able to truly implement the act. And in my view, if we look at the act closely and thoroughly and follow it judiciously, by the grace of God, we will be able to have Hajj management of the type we aspire in Nigeria. I'll just give you one example of the act, which I think is fundamental. The fact that Hajj managers were institutionalized and given a term of office brought in a lot of stability. And I think for us to be able to achieve good hajj management, 
there has to be stability in management at the national and subnational level. It's very important and very crucial. And that's why the Act allowed for two tenors. And I think it also created the ability of institutionalizing knowledge. Because Hajj, as you all know, and as my uncle by my right hand here side will tell you, every Hajj is different. Every year there will always be one challenge. But the beauty of it is that each succeeding year, you make sure that you surmount the challenge of the previous year. And that can always be, can only be done if there is stability in management. Another aspect of the Act, which I found to be very, very important, is the composition of the board. The board, according to the Act, consists of government appointees as well as appointees representing key institutions that have a bearing on Hajj. And these key institutions, to my mind, have been very pivotal in ensuring that there is success and stability in Hajj management. And the key institutions are the Nigeria Supreme Council for Islamic Affairs, the Jamaat al Nasir Islam, the Central Bank of Nigeria, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, the Ministry of Interior, the Ministry of Health, I mean all, the, all these are federal ministries, and I, I, I Ministry of Finance. During my eight-year period as the Chief Executive, I found representatives from these key institutions as very solidifying and stabilizing forces that were able to make sure that anything that related to Hajj in any of their institutions was taken care of promptly. And that is why whatever eventually becomes of Hajj in Nigeria, it is very, very important for it to have government institutional support. Having said that, I don't have much to say except that. A lot of issues regarding Hajj management in Nigeria and improvement in Nigeria tends to forget that one of the greatest support to Hajj management in Nigeria is from the private sector. The day we crossed the crucial point where stability started coming was when Nigeria, I mean Nigerian businesses, own their aircraft. That's the key. Irrespective of what we do, as long as in Hajj, you are not able to control the airlift, then all the other succeeding activities would not fit right. And for that, I think we need to acknowledge in whatever we do, those Nigerian businessmen that decided to invest in aircraft. And for that, we have to look of Cabo Air, at least during the initial six, seven years of my tenure, I remember. And more importantly also, the investment by Rajid Ayurumangal in the purchase of aircraft that brought in Max Air. And then Mr. Monir Bankole that set up Medview Airlines. I'm telling you, I mean, I'm bringing this because for me, the most traumatic experience I had as chairman of the National Commission was in 2009 or 2010, I'm not sure. When we realized two weeks before commencement of airlift, we realized that 70% of the companies that we had appointed had all leased their aircraft from one company in Greece. It's called Hellenic Aviation. Because of a minor disagreement between that company and one of the air carriers in Nigeria, where the, air car the company in Nigeria threatened 
to use Nigerian authority, impound any aircraft that comes into the, our airspace, this company withdrew its aircraft. Two weeks to airlift, we had no capacity to airlift even 20% of the pilgrims. It took a lot of efforts of the late president, President Umar Radua, and of course, a lot of prayers and Allah's Rahma for us to solve the problem. By the time Nigeria had enough capacity to airlift its pilgrims, then it became easier for accommodation providers in Medina to give us their houses because they knew they could work on reliable flight schedules. Because the Saudi Aviation authorities realized that Nigerians would come on time and would move on time, then it became easier for them to agree to move us from the other part of the airport that was meant only for cargo to the main airport itself. And then, of course, other things came into place and they took us more serious. This is just an example that I think in all our discussion, we have to really understand that for us to have Hajj to be very efficient, it is very important for us to look at some of the critical factors and to appreciate the effort, the institutional support and effort from many of the government agencies, particularly the Nigerian Civil NCA Aviation Authority, and so many of them. So, but like I said, during the course of today's encounter and tomorrow, a lot of these things will come to fore. So I don't have much to say except that whatever we do as Hajj managers, independence of funding is absolutely crucial. That's a point Dr. Bogaji and so many of the founding fathers told us 10 years ago. It was apt then, it is apt now. We have tried with a lot of support from the State Pilgrim Welfare Board to raise funds. And from simple calculation, which you will hear later in some of the reports, really, Hajj can be funded by the pilgrims itself. So it's very important for areas of Hajj funds management investments, because ultimately, I mean, that's how it is going to be. And I think it's better for us to work on it. Having said that, uh, Your Eminence, I want to thank you most sincerely uh, for your support to the Commission over the years as our leader. And also I wish to appeal to you to continue to provide the needed support and guidance. And I look across the hall, I see faces of former board members, former chairmen, former this, former that, who have been very, very fundamental and crucial during the formative years. And I do hope that at some point in the future, people like Dr. Sheikh Saleh Okemwa, who has recorded everything, I can tell you, would be able to put what he has recorded in writing so that we should be able to properly document uh, the initial formative years of the National Hatch Commission so that it will guide us as we continue. Having said that, I want also to use the opportunity of this holy gathering because most of you are always on the way to Mecca to continue to pray for the good health of our leader, President Muhammad Buhari, to pray for our nation, Nigeria, to pray for our Ummah, so that we continue to have peace, prosperity, and security, and above all, a conducive environment for us to continue to practice our religion. Subhanahu rabbi karabili zati amayasifu, wa salamun ala mursali. Alhamdulillah, I hope